Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing our call to worship, Shout to the Lord. to be here and glad that you're here with us today uh, we're going to go through our announcements real quick then we'll take prayer requests it's good to have a good friend of mine Patrick Hammett and his wife uh, family with us uh, th this morning so we're going to introduce them here shortly but we're glad that glad that you're with us as well let me run through our announcements real quick then we'll take prayer requests this morning we'll be having a baptism tonight at six o'clock in the Family Life Center everybody come out and support we're going to be baptizing Andy, a, a little one, and so everybody come out, support that, let her know that this is an important thing, that it's a big deal, and that you're affirming what's going on in her life. So come out tonight and, and uh, support that and be a part of that. Uh, our Thanksgiving uh, announcements. Uh, the 15th, we're going to be having a church-wide Thanksgiving meal the night of the 15th at 6 o'clock. Uh, the 22nd, we're going to be having our community-wide Thanksgiving service. Uh, Pleasant Hill will be hosting it this year, and as soon as that's over with, uh, we will have, I think it's snacks following that. So, uh, so th those are our Thanksgiving announcements that's going on. Starting this Wednesday night, we're going to be starting a new study. It's a, a video study on the Harbinger. It's a, a book that's out right now. If you've read it, uh, if you've not read it, take time to do so. But you don't have to have read it to come out because we're going to go through it in the DVD. So come out. It starts at 6.15. I believe you'll really enjoy it. So that, that starts this Wednesday night. Are there any other announcements of any kind uh, before we take prayer requests that we need to announce? My prayer is tonight at 5 o'clock. All right. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, next Sunday we're going to start collecting for hams. You know, every year we've, we've give away hams or turkeys to some degree or another. Last year we gave it away to all the employees at the school, and this year we're going to do the same. So next Sunday we're going to start taking up for that, and, uh, and we'll do that a few times before we get to the time of where we purchase them. So what about prayer requests? Any prayer requests this morning? Margaret, okay. Steve Pierce. Steve Pierce. I'm a okay. Kylie Hubbard. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Deborah Greasy, is that right? Okay. All right. Ricky Dickerson. Jack Worley. Uh, Jack Worley, right. Jean Cook. Jean Cook. Remember Bethany Campbell, she's sick, has fever. Bethany, all right. Little AJ, his test of people. Yeah, AJ still has, does he have some more tests to go? He's got some. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I remember Vince. There was a little girl mentioned in our funny school class of Heather Ito. Okay. She's like 15 months old and has cancer. Okay. Right. Can you yeah. remember Randy? Randy, yeah. We're glad Randy's with us this morning. glad to see you this morning. All right, unspoken with a show of hands. God knows our hearts. He knows the things that are going on. Just stand your feet. Bow your head. Let's take a minute and we'll have a word of prayer. And turn it, excuse me, turn it back over to the choir. If you bow your heads, let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship you and to lift up your name. Father, you've heard the, the ministries that's been mentioned this morning, the things that are coming up. We ask that your Holy Spirit would just guide us through that and uh, that it would bless it and just anoint it. And Lord, in those moments, you'll be glorified. And Father, we pray for the spoken request and for the unspoken as well. Those that are sick, has, uh, they have many things going on in their life. We ask that you would touch them. And for the unspoken, Father, the things that only you know about, the things that we deal with, and God, I ask that, that you would guide us and lead us in all of those areas. And Lord, this morning, we ask that your spirit would just anoint this place in a wonderful way. You know the needs that are here. You know the cares and the concerns. And Lord, we pray that that during this time that you'll, that you'll redirect our thoughts from the things of the world and the, just the, the rat race that we're a part of. And, and uh, Lord, that we'll put our attention up on you, that your Holy Spirit will touch our mind and touch our heart and settle us this morning as we give our attention to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll remain standing, we'll let the choir lead us in worship. Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yeah. 
Good morning again. <laughs> we have a, uh, uh, well, two things. Uh, first, we have a, another new tiny little one here today. My grandson. <laughs> Oliver Matthew Hurston. Hold him up. <laughs> Everybody wants to see him. <laughs> And we have a, a, a special surprise for you today. Maddie is going to sing for us. And this is my granddaughter. <laughs> I would like to get my other granddaughter to come up here, but she won't do it. So you know how shy she is. But anyway, uh, I know you're going to be blessed. And she's going to sing, uh, I wonder if he ever cries. Oh! 
I'm glad I'm not preaching today. <laughs> Amen. Great job. We are uh, so blessed and thankful to have my brother Patrick Hammett uh, with us today. I've known Patrick all my life, and uh, he and I graduated high school together. His mother was my sixth grade teacher, and uh, and I don't hold that against him. Uh, <laughs> she she straightened many of us boys out in the sixth grade, and uh, but we we think a lot of Patrick and his family. They're a wonderful blessing. We're we're so thankful to have them with us, and for the for what we see God doing in their life, and it's a it's a wonderful it's a wonderful thing to see. And uh, Patrick and I we roomed together while we were in Tuscaloosa and graduated together. And uh, so we 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 spent a lot of time together. And so I'm I'm thankful for for the work that he's doing today, for the ministry that he's a part of. And so this morning we're going to uh, invite him to come around, and we're going to have a word of prayer. Come on, Patrick. Father, we thank you so much for who you are, and we thank you for what you do for us. And Lord, we lift up Patrick to you, and we thank you for for who he is and for uh, the way of which you use him and his family. And, and we ask this morning that you just bless him and anoint him in a wonderful way. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, thank you all for having me and my family. Uh, we love being here. I love preaching. I love getting able, being able to share the God's word uh, with individuals. Uh, I love Kenny, his family. Uh, my wife, my beautiful wife Lisa is here. My children, uh, my oldest one, Lizzie. Savannah's the middle, and then Faith, uh, she's the baby of the family. It's amazing she's the baby of the family, but yet she seems to be the one that makes all the rules. Uh, she kind of drives the way things go, uh, but uh, we're just truly blessed. Thank y'all uh, for coming out this morning. Our text is going to come from John chapter 18, if you want to be turning there in your Bibles. Uh, while you're turning there, uh, Kenny and I, you know, we grew up together, and uh, just so that you know, uh, I am the infamous mudslinger. I am the one that slung mud all over his car, and I am the the owner of the truck that got the stick put in it. <laughs> Did not know that for several years afterwards, but uh, that's okay. Uh, Kenny and I grew up. I loved him, loved his family, uh, Leroy, Gloria. Kenny was all, I, I, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but uh, my whole life I've always been kind of short and fat. I, I know, right? It's hard to tell now. But, uh. I always want, and I, listen, I'm about as athletic as that chair. Now, I love sports. I love watching it. I love trying to play, but, I mean, I have two left feet. I've got two left hands. My hand-eye coordination is non-existent. I mean, I'm horrible. I was that kid every coach dreaded having. I mean, I'm just horrible. But, you know, here I am. You know, I'm short and fat. You know, Kenny was always kind of tall and lean. I mean, he just looked athletic. But I always loved, well, I didn't look, but, Anytime we had to run, I always wanted to be right there with Kenny because I could, I, he was the one kid I could always beat. <laughs> and, you know, when you're short and fat, I mean, that's a big deal, you know. When you can outrun somebody that looks like they're athletic, now, you know, he could hit better than me and shoot. Everything else he could do better, but, boy, I could outrun him. Uh, I won't tell any stories on him. I won't tell about the time we found, like, 70 cups under the bed where he just kept taking his medicine and sliding them up under the bed or, anything like that, sleepwalking, anything. But there was one time when we were in Tuscaloosa, and we used to run. I don't know why. It was one of them things. We were crazy. But we were on the quad, and we were going to run around the quad. And I think you had to run around it like four times to be a mile. I don't know. But on our first trip by, they were some rough-looking characters. You know, Kenny was like a step or two ahead of me. I mean, they were rough-looking. So, you know, we ran by them, and there was something. I needed to tell Kenny or something. I don't know. So I tried. I started running, and I was going to catch up to him and tell him something. And every time I'd speed up, he'd speed up. I mean, it, we made it around one lap. Because by the time we came around that last turn, we were in full-blown sprint. I mean, we were just, ah! So finally, you know, we get to the end. He has to stop, and I have to stop. I said, man, what was wrong with you? He said, I thought it was them guys following us. So... <laughs> There's not really a moral to that story. It's just one we like to tell. That's just, a, that's just one of the ones I can tell and not have to worry about getting food poisoning when I go back to their house later this evening. <laughs> I love Kenny. Uh, I love his family. I told at the uh, early service I had the pleasure. The first wedding ceremony I ever performed was for Kenny and Amy, and uh, it is just by divine intervention that the two of them are still married. Uh, <laughs> Kenny, like I said earlier, and I'll say it again, uh, Amy is a patient, godly woman. Uh, I, I lived with him for two years in Tuscaloosa. I don't know how she's done it. I don't know. Uh, she just patience. I mean, she must have the patience of Job. I don't know. 
No, I'm joking. I love them. Wonderful people. And I know y'all are truly blessed to have Brother Kenny here. Uh, he's a wonderful man of God. Comes from a wonderful Christian home, home Christian family. Uh, you're just blessed. Uh, you need to, when you pray, you need to thank God for the pastor that you have because we're living in a world where there's not a lot of good ones anymore. I mean, there's a lot of, just be thankful for what you have. John chapter 18, we're going to read verse 38, or actually just the first part of verse 38. And we're going to be looking at the idea this morning of what is truth. And that's a very poignant question that we really need to be asking. If we look at the world today, we look at everything that's going on in the world, we look at all the problems, all the issues, we look at everything that's going on, we really need a group of people that would take a step back and simply just say, you know, what is truth? Now, not, not what is my interpretation of truth, not what is my idea of what might truth be, not what is what do those individuals up there on the stage during the debates tell me that truth is, not what does the public school education system tell my kids that truth is, but really honestly and truthfully, just what is truth? What can I base my life upon? What can I build my life upon? What can I mold my relationships around? What can I raise my children with? What can I set as the goal and standard in my life? What is truth? The 38th verse of the Lord of God says, Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said unto them, I find no fault in him at all. Now, that's very interesting because we find Pilate is speaking to Jesus Christ. I mean, he is face to face with Jesus. He can reach out and touch him. He can look him in the eyes. He can see the beard. I mean, he is face to face with Jesus Christ, and he asks, what is truth? Of everything he could have asked, of every question he could have posed, the one thing that he wanted to know more than anything else is what is truth? And when we look at our culture and we look at our society, we look at everything that's going on in the world today, honestly, many things are happening because the world is crying out, just as Pilate was here, what is truth? What is real? What is substantial? What stands the test of time? What can I put my faith in? What can I put my hope in? What can I put my trust in? What will stand the test of time? What will remain when everything else is gone? What is truth? truth now the questions there's many questions that are asked they don't necessarily come out and say well what is truth they ask questions like well you know what do I do or how do I address how do I handle you know certain issues and things you know what am I going to do about the issue of homosexuality how am I going to address that how am I going to respond to that how am I going to respond to and address the issues like uh, same-sex marriage or human trafficking poverty uh, abortion, all these different issues. How am I going to respond to it? What am I supposed to think about it? What am I supposed to do with it? How am I supposed to react to people? How am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to act? The questions are asked, but in all actuality, what they're looking for is what is truth. Our churches, we're constantly asking the question, well, you know, how can we increase membership? How can we increase attendance? How can we get people to give more? How can we get people to serve more? How can we get new classes started? How can we do this or how can we do that? When in all actuality, what we're really asking is, what is truth? The Apostle Paul tells us in one of his places, he says, I have found that whatever state I'm in, there am I am content. I'm just content. Why would the Apostle Paul be content? Well, the Apostle Paul was content because he had found the truth that day on the road to Damascus. He had found the truth. He knew what truth was. That's why he could say, if I'm hungry, I'm content. If I'm full, I'm content. If everything's going great, I'm content. If everything's going horrible, I'm just content. In the book of Romans, he talks about how that there was a spiritual warfare going on within him, how that he knew to do things and didn't do them, but not to do things and did those things. And yet, in the midst of all of that, inner turmoil he said I'm content in the book of Corinthians he talks about how that there was a thorn of the flesh a buffeter of Satan that had been given to him and yet he was content another place he talks about the peace of God that passes all understanding and you look at Paul's life and you say how can you talk about peace I mean you have been shipwrecked you have been stoned and left for dead you have a thorn in the flesh you have a spiritual warfare going on within you. How can you talk about peace? He knew the truth. And once we know the truth, every other one of those questions are answered. That's why you have peace in the midst of the storm. We have got to find truth. If you argue with truth, you are wrong. 
if you reject truth, you are condemned. But if you accept truth, you are free. The Word of God says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you accept the truth, you are free. If you receive the truth, you are saved. So our question this morning is, what is truth? But as we get ready to begin to preach on what is truth, we've got to kind of lay some foundation. And that is, we've got to understand that, number one, truth is not up for interpretation. We do not get to decide what truth is. And since we do not get to decide what truth is, then really at the end of the day, whether or not we accept it or whether or not we approve of it has no impact on what truth is. If you don't like the truth, that doesn't mean that the truth no longer is true. It means that the truth is correct and you are not. By the way, with that being said to the young lady that did our singing this morning, you did an awesome job. And that is the truth. You did a wonderful job. And let me tell you something else, dear. You keep doing that. Because God has given you a gift and a talent and he wants you to use it. But guess what, darling? There's a lot of adults sitting behind you that God has given gifts, talents, and abilities to. And they grieve the Holy Spirit because they won't use their talents to bring him praise, honor, and glory like you did. And right now, some of you maybe think you're starting to get angry. The truth is, that isn't anger. That's conviction. Yeah. Good job, darling. You did a wonderful, wonderful job this morning. The truth does not depend on us accepting truth. It does not depend on us approving of it. Truth is truth. It does not matter what we think about it. It doesn't matter what we believe about it. The truth is the truth. So this morning, what is truth? If you want to accept the truth, if you've got problems in your life, if you have issues in your life, if you have questions in your life, what is the truth? Well, number one, truth is a person. Now, that's very important that we get that kind of foundation laid. Truth is a person. It's not an abstract idea. It is not something that human beings have constructed and came up with. Truth is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, the Word of God says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one cometh unto the Father except through me. Truth is a person, and since truth is a person, it's undebatable. You cannot debate the truth because Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. You cannot debate Jesus Christ. It is Christ. So it's indebatable. And the truth is his word. John 17, 17, Jesus says, praying to the Father, says, sanctify them, by your, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And then in John chapter 1, verses 1, and then again in verse 14, the word of God says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as one of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So therefore, truth is a person who is the word of God. Therefore, truth is truth. You, truth, uh, truth is truth. You cannot debate it. You cannot change it. Truth is what it is. The question this morning is, do we know Jesus Christ? Well, Brother Patrick, or preacher, what does it mean to know Jesus Christ? I know a lot of people. I know my mother. I know my father. I know about George Washington. I know about Winston Churchill. I know about a lot of people. Now, I ask, do you know the truth? In the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He said, if thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that word confess is a very interesting word. You see, a lot of times we want to say the word profess. If you profess Christ, well, no, he doesn't say profess. He says confess. And confession is when you verbally tell somebody about something that has occurred. So if you confess Christ as Lord, what you're doing is you're literally telling people, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. He's in charge of my life. I have surrendered all I have to him. There's an old hymn. It says, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I surrender all all to Jesus. See, right now, Kenny is scared to death because he's heard me sing before. And right now, he's praying. I mean, he's earnestly praying. Oh, Lord, please don't let him sing. Don't worry. I've learned a few lessons. I'm not going to try to sing. Do you know Jesus Christ this morning? If you know Jesus Christ, you know the truth. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, you do not know the truth. You may think you know the truth. You may know ideas about the truth. You may have been told, but you don't know the truth. So why is the truth? Brother Patrick, why should I trust Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of my life? 
Why should I follow the truth? Why should I trust the truth? Well, first of all, if we look at that word truth, the T, truth is timeless. Truth is timeless. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, the Word of God says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Isn't it a blessing to know that we serve a Lord and Savior? We serve a God. We have an eternal Savior that is the same yesterday, today, and He's never going to change. Now that means that it, things that was a sin a hundred years ago are sin today, and they're going to be a sin a hundred years from now. That means the things that God had commanded us to do a hundred years ago, He's commanding us to do today, and He's going to continue to command us to do it a hundred years from now. That also means the things that aren't, don't amount to a hill of beans a hundred years ago, they don't amount to a hill of beans today, and they won't amount to a hill of beans a hundred years from now. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You can trust your eternal soul to Jesus Christ because he does not change. I change. People change. Religions change. Denominations change. Kenny and I was talking earlier. When we grew up, I had no clue Kenny or his family was Methodist. He had no clue we were Baptist. And he wanted to know something. I'll go ahead and tell you the honest truth. When I was growing up, I had no clue. I went to a Baptist church. I just went to St. Chapel. I didn't know what it was. Things change. Jesus Christ never changes. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in the truth, that what you're doing is you're putting your faith in something that has existed before time existed. You're putting your faith in someone that is true today and you're putting your faith in someone 10 trillion years from now is still the truth. You tell me any other thing you can put your faith in that will withstand the test of time like that. By the way, I'm an 8th grade teacher. I have a degree, I'm an 8th grade science teacher. I have a, a BS degree in biology from the University of Alabama. Scientifically, I can tell you nothing remains the same. Everything changes except Jesus Christ. Where else would you put your faith? Where else would you put your hope? Where else would you put your confidence? On what else would you build your family? On what else will you raise your children? On what else will you trust your eternal soul other than he who was and is and forevermore shall be? Do you know the truth? Do you know Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of your life? Because he is timeless. Not only is the truth timeless, but the truth is radiant. That means that the truth shines out. There is no holding it back. The truth is radiant. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, the word of God says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In the book of Romans, the apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, thou art inexcusable, O man. Why are we inexcusable? Because Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is radiant. He shines forth. In this sin-sick, depressing dark and dismal culture and society in which we live today, the light of Jesus Christ shines out like a beacon on a shore to a ship looking for safe harbor. It is totally opposite of everything the world offers. Everything the world offers is temporary. Everything the world offers is about immediate gratification right here and right now and everything the world offers at the end of it produces death and destruction and depression Jesus Christ is the polar opposite everything he offers is eternal everything he offers is eternally gratifying and at the end of oh that's right there is no end of it because he's timeless the same yesterday today and forevermore there is no end of it he is radiant a lot of times within the churches, us pastors and leaders of the church, we get, to, we get together and we try to figure out which direction our church needs to go, which path our church needs to go down. And any time you get more than one individual there, you're going to have more than one opinion. I mean, that's just the, the reality of life. But then right in the middle of it, you have Jesus Christ and he's radiating a path. 
And as you come together and you get together and you get on that path, it's amazing how things just continue to be enlightened and lit up so that you can see the path that you're supposed to go down. It's wonderful. Many years ago, my wife and I were members at Mount Vernon Baptist Church, and before uh, we got there, they had this young pastor, and he came in, and there was a question about the worship service, what kind of worship service they wanted to do, and the yada yada, and back and forth. I'm sure y'all Methodists, y'all don't have those problems like us Baptists do. We, us Baptists, we like to fight about anything. I mean, that's just the way we are. We love a good fuss. Now, we don't call it a fuss. We call it a business meeting. But, I mean, we love to fuss. I mean, we just love, I mean, we get all over. We'll even have a meal beforehand so that we got enough energy to get riled up and really get into it. But they were at this business meeting, and they were talking about doing their worship service, and in the middle of the congregation was an old former pastor. And everybody loved him. And he, he had retired. He was doing the homebound ministry for the church. Well, the pastor was there, Brother David Martin. He was talking about how that he had been praying, and he thought that God kind of wanted to do this. And Brother Harvey Taylor stood up. And I'm, I'm, this is the story I've heard, and I've heard it told several times, so I know it to be true. Brother Harvey Taylor said, Brother David, I need to ask you a question. He said, yes, sir. He said, have you prayed about this? He said, yes, sir, I have. Do you honestly think that this is what Jesus Christ wants you to do? He said, yes, I do. I honestly think this is what Jesus Christ wants me to do. He said, well, brother, I have no clue what you're talking about, but if Jesus says it's okay, I will follow you to the ends of the earth. That's what we need in our churches. We need some folks that will just hitch up with Jesus Christ and say, you know what? I may not necessarily understand it, I may not necessarily really know what's going on, but as long as Jesus Christ is out front and he's radiating the path, I'm going to stay with him regardless. I'm going to let him radiate my path. I'm going to let him lead me. I have trusted my eternal soul to him, so I'm going to trust my today to him. I have given him my past. I'm going to give him my present. I've given him my future. Let's go. The truth is radiant. It is radiating and the truth is universal. The truth is universal. It's timeless. It never changes. It's radiating. It radiates out, and it's universal. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 31, it says, Because he, this is God, because God has appointed a day in, a day in which he, God, will judge the world in righteousness by that man. That man is Jesus Christ. So God has appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world by Jesus Christ, who God has ordained, wherefore God has given assurance unto all men. In other words, that's universal, unto all men, and that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, I'm going to give Jesus Christ my life. I'm going to give him my past. I'm going to give him my present. I'm going to give him my future. I'm going to surrender all to him. He's going to radiate a path for me, and then I'm going to be judged according to him. I am not going to be judged according to what my church believes. I'm not going to be judged according to what your church believes. I'm not going to be judged according to the Articles of Faith of the Baptist Church. I'm not going to be judged according to the Catholic Catechism. I'm not going to be judged according to how many times I take communion with the Episcopal Church. I'm not going to be judged according to how loud I jump for the Pentecostal Church. I'm not going to be judged... Make sure we stay quiet. I'm not going to be judged according to whether or not I got baptized in the Church of Christ. I'm not going to be judged according to anything other than Jesus Christ. He is my judge. And you know what the wonderful thing about being judged by Jesus Christ is? Number one, He's radiant. He will illuminate the path. He doesn't say live like me and then go off and leave you. No, he says live righteously and then he illuminates the path of righteousness and he says there it is. In the book of Hebrews it talks about Jesus Christ as being the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, he starts it, he ends it, and he's in control all the way through. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It's not going to change. I don't have to worry about getting an updated version. Those of you that are school teachers or ever have been school teachers, you know how aggravating it is that just when you get down pat, this is what I'm supposed to do, they give you a new course of study. And it's totally different. This preacher almost lost his religion last year. I had my science curriculum down, and I loved it. I mean, I had it. And then they changed it. Had to do it totally, to, you know, what you were doing, oh, that we don't do that anymore, da, 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 so I had to change it. And I just had got this new one down pat just like I liked it, you know, and now they've changed it again. Guess what? It's just like what I used to do. 
about what I was doing when I first started teaching down there. Oh, no, that really was good. You know, oh, the, this preacher nearly lost his religion. I was just like, you people, oh, if you could just get within arm's reach of me. <laughs> but truth is universal unto all men, and it's unchanging. Truth is timeless, it's radiant, it's universal, and it's tasty. It's tasty. See, I knew Brother Kenny being involved. Y'all are going to do a lot of eating around here. Tasty means it's testable. God, through the psalmist, says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. In other words, God says, Hey, just give it a shot. Give me a chance. Try me out for a little while. You've tried everything else out. You've tried the bottle. You've tried the pill bottle. You've tried relationships. You've tried this. You've tried that. You've tried sport. You've tried everything. Why don't you give me a shot? Try me on for size. Let me who created the universe, why don't you turn to me? Why don't you trust me? Why don't you surrender your life to the truth? Let me radiate the path you're supposed to be on because I'm the one that's going to judge you and why don't you give me a shot? And see just how awesome your life truly can be. And the truth is here. It is here. We don't have to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. We don't have to go try to dig up some gold tablets and go to Utah somewhere. The truth is here. Jesus Christ and his love is right here. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. Probably the most awesome little phrase in the word of God. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Now listen to what Jesus says. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. In other words, Jesus says, you can't get rid of me. That's what I have to tell my wife every now and then. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. You're stuck with me. She tries to get rid of me. But like I told you, I can, to be a fat guy, I can run pretty fast. So, you know, you're stuck with me. You're not getting rid of me. Jesus says, listen, I'm with you. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You've trusted me. You've surrendered all to me. You've got me. I'm not leaving you. I'm yours yesterday, I'm yours today, I'm yours forevermore. And he is right here. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, he's right here. If you have trusted Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, but you've turned your back on him, he's right here. So, Brother Patrick, what do I do? I, what do I do about Jesus Christ? Now that I know the truth, I know it's timeless. I know that it's, <coughs> excuse me, I know it's radiant, it's universal, it's tasty, I can test it, it's here. What do I need to do? How do I respond to the truth? What is your response to the truth? Well, number one, you have to tell it. And it, it helps every now and then if you use words too. But tell it with your life, with your actions, with your ministries, with what you do, and with the words of your mouth. Tell the truth. Jesus, in that 28th chapter of the book of uh, Matthew, right before that verse we read, says, Go to all of the world. Right before he's ascended in Acts chapter 1, he tells his apostles, All power will be given to you. In other words, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have power to go to Jerusalem, Jer Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Go and tell it. Like the old hymns, go tell it on the mountain. Over the hill and everywhere, go tell people about Jesus Christ, then rely on it. If I'm going to trust Jesus Christ with my eternity, if I'm going to surrender my life to him, rely on him. Brother Patrick, what does it mean to rely on him? Let me give you a personal. I wish I remember, I wish I remembered to share this in the first service. Let me give you a personal example of what it means to rely on Jesus Christ. Relying on Jesus Christ means that a doctor tells you your youngest daughter is going to be born with spina bifida. Relying on Jesus Christ means that that doctor tells you she probably will never walk. Relying on Jesus Christ means that less than a week after she's born, she's going to have major brain surgery. And they're going to place a shunt in her head to drain the fluid and keep it from being up on her brain. Relying on Jesus means that you are in a room with your mother-in-law because your wife can't be there because she's had a C-section and surgery and she can't come in that room. And that with your mother-in-law and all those doctors, they say, do you want to pray? And relying on Jesus 
means that you try to pray, but you can't. I mean, I open my mouth and words will not come out. And the only words that could come out of my mouth after what seemed like an hour of standing there was very simple. I will remember this to the day I die. Jesus, I can't go with her, but you can. She's yours. I'm out. That's what it means to rely on Jesus. And by the way, if you want to see what it looks like to rely on Jesus, you can see my little baby and you can see her walk. And you can see what God has done for her life. And it's not me. None of it's me. It's all him. Rely on the truth and utilize it. Use it. It's okay every now and then to say, God, I can't do this, but you can. Holy Spirit, I need you to protect me. Listen, grandmothers and grandfathers and mothers and fathers, it's okay to get your children and say, Holy Spirit, I can't go with them to school, but you can. Protect them. Build a wall around them. Don't let the world have them. It's okay to rely and utilize Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit and teach it. They need to hear it. They're, listen, I'm a public school teacher. You don't want to know what they're learning in the world. You don't want to know the garbage that's being shoved down their throat by their friends and the, everything else. You better be teaching Jesus Christ and Him, His sacrifice and the Word of God and honor it. Honor what you teach. Honor what you believe. Honor the Word of God in your life, in your words, in your business, whatever, every area of your life. Honor the truth of Jesus Christ. Too many lives, too many testimonies, too many witnesses have been destroyed because people did not honor the Word of God. Honor the truth. This morning, I ask you simply, number one, do you know the truth? Do you know Jesus Christ? Number two, if so, how are you responding to it? With heads bowed and eyes shut, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to have a verse of invitation this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for the wonderful blessings of life you've given me. More than anything else, I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for my sins. And I pray this morning. Dear God, that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you in the free pardon of sin, that before it's eternally too late, they will surrender their lives to you. I would ask you, dear God, if there's those of us here that have confessed you as the Lord of our life, but we've turned our back on you, that today would be the day in which we would return to you. We would dedicate ourselves fully to love and serve and worshiping and honoring you. Dear God, I pray that anything that needs to be dealt with today, any business that needs to be done with you, Heavenly Father, we would listen to the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and just surrender to you. Now, all these things we ask for in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.